Hey, oh, welcome everyone to episode 58 of Today in the Scene. I'm Joe with Indie Arcade Wave, and I just want to say thank you to everyone that's checking us out, has been liking, sharing, subscribing. Um, it means the world to us, and we're just going to keep doing it for you. So this week, we're going to bring back Eddie, uh, who is one of the co-founders of Flynn's Arcade and more uh, in South Florida. And we're going to talk about what's going on with them, what what's changed since the last time we spoke. I believe that was like mid-March. Uh, so it's been a pretty long time. Um, but you, they started this arcade pretty recently. Um, they've been making some big moves and just basically a shout out to any nerds in Florida. You need to go check this place out. So here's Eddie. How you doing today, man? Hey, Joe. I'm doing good, brother. Yourself? I'm doing great. Um, really glad you could finally come on here. And this is a, an interesting one. We've got uh, your Instagram followers checking us out live, which... Uh, Anybody that's watching this is basically getting the live footage two weeks in advance. So oh, it's going to be a little while before this one comes out. So this is a big sneak peek. Well, I'll be sure that if they ask any questions, I will, uh, I'll make sure to ask you their questions. <laughs> good, good. I'm, I'm going to want that. I, I like to fill it out a little bit more with some, uh, some viewer questions. Uh, before we jump into it, I just want to say uh, thanks for checking us out. If you guys like what we're doing here, don't forget to subscribe, like, share. We're on all the social medias. Um, it's probably a couple we're not on Facebook. Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, YouTube, YouTube. Twitter, Twitter. Yes. I think those are the big hitters. Those are the important ones. Yeah. So we'll, we'll, we'll mention those for right now. Uh, right. Right. Um, well, let's just jump into it, Eddie. I mean, we've already talked, we've kind of gotten to know you a little bit, just reintroduce yourself for anybody that didn't see the last episode. So we know a little bit more about who you are and what you do. Yeah, for sure. Well, my name is Eddie Acevedo. I am one of the founders uh, and creators of Flynn's Arcade here in Margate, Florida. Um, I uh, I run other businesses, uh, and uh, we've we've spent the last uh, well, let's see, December two thousand eighteen is really when we started the concept of Flynn's, and then uh, it's just progressed. We opened our doors to the public December seventh, two thousand and nineteen, um, and then we went through all the chaos that the world went through, and then. From there, we are still open and running, up and running, and uh, yeah. And Flynn's Arcade, once again, is in Margate, Florida, south. That's southeast Florida for those who are listening out of the state. Um, it's on the, the tip next to Fort Lauderdale and Miami. Well, closer to Fort Lauderdale than Miami, but that general area. Right. So um, what did you do before you got into arcades? Like, just give us a background. as to, like, it's, it's always interesting to see how, like, either developers or arcade owners, like, how did you get into such a kind of like a niche hobby, especially on your end where you're like fixing cabinets and buying cabinets and dealing with like, it's a huge headache just as a collector, but also like adding into the business side of it. Oh, for sure, dude. Well, um, I was a teacher for six years. Uh, in about 2011, I left teaching full time. I uh, got my real estate license, uh, became a real estate broker, was in real estate and I still am active in real estate. Um, down here in South Florida, and then um, started a digital media company that catered to realtors as well as like mega yacht owners and commercial brokers and people who sell commercial real estate. And that's still up and running. It's called AccuTour. And then from there, uh, my buddy Will and I, uh, Will's my partner at Flynn's, uh, we were renovating a house that I was selling for a customer of mine. We just started talking. And this is about December, oh no, excuse me, it's about November 2018. Um, December is when we really started working at that particular house. We just started brainstorming and thinking like, man, is this possible? Is this, is this a good time to do this? Um, previous to, to, to starting Flynn's, I had created, um, I had created retrocades, which retrocades were like pop-up arcade events. And we had a handful of arcade games, DDR and my main machines. And, um, and we bring out video game consoles and it was really cool. Cause we would do it at like my friend's tattoo parlors. Um, my friend's uh, print shop in Deerfield, Mint Prints. Uh, we did it at Underground Coffee House in Oakland Park, Florida. And we were drawing good numbers. I mean, it would be a couple hundred here, 200 here, 300 here, 400 here. And it got me thinking that, man, you know, people people seem to want this. And they want uh, a sense of a community, somewhere to belong. So in December of 2018, uh, Will and I were renovating his house, started fleshing the idea out. Uh then we pretty much met at this uh, Panera Bread off of Glades and 441 in Boca Raton for from January all the way till like at least March or April. And we meet every week. We write down notes and ideas, give ourselves tasks to complete, things to research, things to look into. 
And then once we did that, uh, about uh, May, June-ish, we began looking for real estate and looking for a place to kind of like build our roots. And then we locked down the lease at our, our current location in Margate in like May and June. And then we did the demolition from June all the way up until December 7th. Um, even on the day of our grand opening, we're still we're still busy working on things. Um, and so that's pretty much brings you like face forward. And then during that time, I was also married and or I still am married. Um, I got married to my wife, Danny, and, you know, moved around and bought a house and have a lot of animals. And and yeah, that's pretty <laughs> that's pretty much what we did before. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like you had a bunch going on um, a little bit there that I learned that I didn't know from the last time. Um, but yeah, it, it, you guys seem to, to know what you're doing. One thing you talked about last time that was huge was the business plan. Like make sure you know what you're getting into and you have like concrete plan, like to right. follow at least. Um, sure. and so much has changed with the arcade. I've been following you guys on social media. You've got different events and you're, you're holding these different gatherings and so much stuff that looks like a ton of fun. I wish I was in the area. Uh, but I'm just curious as to what has been going on in the arcade since we spoke in March? Like, what are some of the big events that you've had? What are some big developments that have happened? Uh, things like that. Well, so since March of this year, all the way up till August this year, um, we've, we've had a number of events. Too many to rattle off. I'll just hit some of the heavy hitters. Um, we're all about community at Flynn. It's all about the Flynn's family first and foremost and what we can do for the community around us. And and also like how we can volunteer and, and, and provide uh, fundraising opportunities for like nonprofits, animal shelters, high schools, children's and children in need. Uh, we've done things for Veterans Day. We've done things for Father's Day. And it's about our mantra, our chant, if you will, is about how much joy, happiness and love can we put back into this world? Because if you're not making this world better for others, then really what's the point um, in existing? And I really take that to heart. And that wasn't my phrase. Actually, Will Smith talked about that at a point in an interview. And, and I believe it wholeheartedly. And so we've been cultivating different events. Um, like, for instance, September 18th, right around the corner, uh, a little 38 days away, we have our Flynn's Not At A Con Cosplay Con, which is technically our, four, no, our fifth rendition of our cosplay events. And each time they get more and more epic. And if you're in the South Florida area, you want to make a trip, this is going to be the biggest one of all. Um, it's going to be, I have so many like surprises I'm working on and things I'm not going to convey just yet because I'm not, they are not solidified, but some really cool um, uh, advances in that, in that area. We've had events like just this past Wednesday, um, last week, we had my friend Dominic Pace from The Mandalorian um, at Flynn's doing um, a signing and a comic book debut for his uh, first comic book from the series and uh, just meeting them and we had um, professional cosplaying, uh, Star Wars cosplaying groups, the 501st, the Legion with us. We had just an amazing turnout. Um, we've done stuff also for Warhammer. Warhammer is definitely something that we've evolved into from Games Workshop. We do Warhammer at least a couple Mondays a week because we were closed on Mondays. The arcade is closed, so we utilize that um, uh, for, for Warhammer. We do Warhammer 40K. Uh, the guys meet up. And the guys, gals, everybody meets up. Um, they they play at Flynn's. And then on Wednesday nights, we have our D&D &D Dungeons and Dragons group meeting at 7 p.m. On Thursday nights, we have our build and paint nights when all the builders come together, be it people working on their cosplay or Gundam builders or uh, dolls or minis or whatever it is. We do that on Thursdays. And also another advancement that we've made, we, we kept it up, but we've really been uh, Silverback Senpai our TO and our stream guru, if you will, at Flynn's has really been encouraging us and pointing us in the right direction of making sure that we keep our eye on the fighting game community. So I'm about to announce, um, hopefully within the next couple of days, we'll be hosting a very large Smash Ultimate tournament at MizuCon in um, Miami on, uh, I believe it's September 4th, whatever that Saturday is. I think it's, I believe it's the 4th. Um, we'll be hosting a very large Smash Ultimate tournament. I mean, heck, this Saturday we have Sunrise Comic Con in Sunrise, Florida, where we'll be attending as well. We're going to bring a handful of our arcade games because we have extras <laughs> that I can bring out. And then we'll be hosting their local um, their local uh, Smash Ultimate tournament there with our own Smash, tourna own Smash Ultimate tournament at night on Saturday. So on Fridays right now, we're running Grand Blue Fantasy Versus at 7 p.m., 
Um, on Saturdays, we run our Smash Ultimate tournament at 7 p.m. And on Sundays, we run a Guilty Gear Strive. Once again, Senpai has really kept us in tune with what fighting games we should begin to evolve to and migrate to, um, keeping us with Twitch and ensuring and in, 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 in our work to partnership with them in, in, in the partner level from affiliate to partner and working on that and uh, working on our uploading to YouTube and, and uh, creating affiliate and sponsorship levels for our Smash players with Flynn's. And with CEO right around the corner, we want to once again provide an opportunity for offline tournaments because you and I both know there's – it's a totally different world than doing online versus offline tournaments. So uh, we have that going on uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We integrated a payment gateway through our website and our registration gateway through our website for our players that they can register right there at flinsgaming.com. Uh, we are integrating uh, Smash GG into our brackets. Um, it's just amazing to see how, you know, everybody's coming together. And, and another thing uh, in that is that I've come to the realization even more so since since March that it, it takes a tribe really to run a community. Um, one person can't do it all. One person shouldn't do it all. Um, I'm not an expert at streaming. I'm not an expert uh, when it comes to certain creative things and, and many things I'm not an expert at. So at Flynn's, we've been definitely cultivating the community, the Flynn's family, as we call it. Um, another huge development that we had on, um, what was that? That was like uh december november like yeah december november ish we had executed at least for the expansion of flynn's so right now we're neck deep in the expansion so when i'm not at flynn's or not working on real estate or any of my other companies i'm right there on the expansion side uh grinding concrete painting uh mopping sweeping uh destroying sheetrock uh removing metal studs uh, throwing things away and, uh, and and working on the expansion side right now to expand uh, Flynn's footprint. Um, the expansion side is an additional 2,000 square feet of space. Right now, Flynn sits at 1650. So we'll be just under 4,000 square feet when it's all said and done. Um, we've been grinding with all the permits and, and the electrical and ACs because the bay that we were in, or the bay, excuse me, that we acquired which was the only bay we really could. We had a fight for like six months before we even executed the lease in order to ensure that we were able to have the space because a lot goes into zoning and whether or not you're zoned appropriately and the city will allow your use to occupy that space. Um, a lot goes into ensuring that the city's code will allow it. Um, so we've been, got, we've been doing that and we've had, once again, donations pouring in from our Flynn's family members that are able to donate right on our website at flynnsgaming.com. And, and we have like a little donation box in front because be a hundred percent honest. It's it's we've been pouring every single extra cent we have into the expansion. Um, and it took a lot more than we anticipated because the side that we acquired hadn't been occupied for 16 years. So there is a lot. How did it sit vacant for that long? Like 16 years? <laughs> 16 years, yeah. With businesses right next door. With businesses right next door, brother. Um, what ended up happening actually was, it was, long story short, our plaza is owned by the city, okay? And since our plaza is owned by the city, it's a little different than like, let's say a corporate owner, right? Just because they view things, in my opinion, differently than a corporate owner would. And because the uses for those spaces is a little different, <clears throat> they had a harder time, in my personal belief, acquiring tenants for it because it required a lot of heavy lifting. Typically in the commercial real estate world, because I am in that world, you'll get a, a commercial space called what we call in, our, in the industry, call it vanilla, which means you'll have the floors done, the walls done, everything pretty much done, ACs done, everything ready to rock and roll, and you just move in. But because the city owns it and they do things a little differently, in order to get a more affordable rent, you do what they call leaseholder credits, which means you are doing the heavy lifting in lieu of a discount on your rent. Um, so I believe it was a dentist office before. There was, dude, there was, there was a million different offices. Um, and remember, this is built 16 years ago. So the code was a little different. So they used all wood um, insulation for soundproofing. Um, it was it was a lot. 
So now we're down to bare floor, bare walls, bare ceiling. We've began to work on the walls, ceiling, floors. We began to, uh, our all our permits are going through the process with our electricians and our ACs. Because the bay is so big, it's literally like, um, I call it my cafetornasium because that's what I remember from middle school because it's one giant open room. So it's 2,000 square feet. The ceilings hit right around 15, 17 feet tall. There's two AC systems. Remember, one AC system at that level can range anywhere from you know five to eight grand a piece, and we need two of them. So that's just for the that's just for the the, the, the equipment. Now you're talking about labor expenses, and then the electrical, obviously being outdated, has to be upgraded to meet new city codes, and and then dealing with flooring and and sealing that, and and there's a lot going on with that, bro. So we've been we've been grinding that out literally and figuratively uh, since December. Um, we kind of kept it to ourselves for a while, um, just because we wanted to make sure that everything was like set. And so we shared it about about a, two months ago with everybody. And you know, as you can see on my, our social media, Flynn's Gaming FL, that um, we are are making progress slowly but surely. And it's Will and I and a handful of Flynn's family members with previous uh, experience uh, in that industry helping us out to the best of their ability. But it's a lot of late nights and a lot of early mornings, man. Um, you know, typically on a Tuesday, I would be in that bay. Now, mind you, there's no AC in there right now. So that bay's temperature. You don't bay. need AC. You're in Florida. It's <laughs> fine. So so right now, it, there's no AC. So it's about, I think I clocked the highest temperature, like one, 115, 120. Um, and at night, even at night, the problem is the back doors are open. We create airflow and the mosquitoes come in. So that was, that's always a lot of fun. So, um, or the bats come inside. Um, so, I'd take bats over mosquitoes any day. <laughs> well, I want the bats to be there so they eat the mosquitoes. Right, you know? right. <laughs> so, so I'm usually there on Tuesdays until, you know, 10, 30, 11, 11, 30, 12 o'clock at night, um, just chipping away at things, uh, patching, sanding, sweeping, mopping, moving. Um, and, and we're anxious to get this open because you know, to, to, to segue, that space is going to allow us to do so much more um, for our community. Um, we will be able to uh, grow our tabletop. My my vision is, this is kind of the vibe that I want our Flynn's family to have, is that even though walking into Flynn's right now feels, I want it to feel like you're walking into your friend's house um, and your family's house. I want that feeling to resonate even stronger when you're walking into the expansion. And what I mean by that is we plan to have uh, like a lounging area where, you know, couches and TVs and VHSs and have manga you can sit down and read if you want to, or comic books you can sit down and read, tabletop space for board game nights, uh, Warhammer, D&D, &D, X-Wing, uh, cosplay workshop nights, uh, you know, karaoke, trivia, all our tournaments will be upgraded. And this space will also allow me to open up the to open up that venue to our our community so we have artists that want to start doing art classes there or offer art there for people or you know people that want to have their own little mini conventions like because you know it's really expensive to rent out um a, a hotel room and um and also the logistics and i want to make that an opportunity for people where they could come in and they could host their own little convention like for sneakerheads or for Pez collectors or for whatever. Um, that's what I really want. And, and, and music is also a huge part of my life. So I really want to be able to also open up that space for local artists who want to get practice performing live um, and who want to get that, that going in their life. And, uh, and, and really that's just the tip of the iceberg. I'm, I'm anxiously awaiting to see that vision come to life. I feel like I'm Willy Wonka and the factory's not built yet. That makes, sense. <laughs> that, does. that makes perfect sense. And that was actually really funny. I feel like you, I feel like we're on the same wavelength there. You just answered three of my questions, like in sequence, like exactly oh, nice. how I was going to ask them. Um, because we did talk last time. I don't remember if it was on camera or not, but we, we spoke about the expansion, how that was a plan of yours and things that you wanted to do with it. 
Um, and I'm, I'm a big fan of the idea of like having small conventions. They're like sneaker heads or pets collect. Like that's, that's a really cool idea. Like, so that the community has the ability to like meet people that have similar interests. Cause you, you the way you, I mean, the, what you said about like hotel convention spaces, is <laughs> it's so true. Like if you want to talk about something and you know, a handful of people that, that are into collecting it, like you don't just have 10 grand, you know, to like rent out the space. Like that's a lot of money to throw down on it. Um, but that is, that is really cool that that's the plan. And I love the lounge idea. Like feel like you walk into like your homie's basement or like you hang out all the time and play smash or whatever. Um, for other things that are in the arcade, um, I guess on the arcade side, what plans do you have for new games? Like, are there any games that you have your eyes on or any like old classic games that you like, you really want to get one of those in the arcade? Well, see, the thing is on what I'm going to do is I'm going on the, on the Flynn side right now, it will be only arcades. Will and I and a couple of buddies of mine are are have been discussing that we we plan to shut down for about a week because I want to give the arcade side an overhaul, um, not just in the games but also in the layout, the aesthetics. I have uh, I've been really blessed and fortunate by having really cool ideas given to me about making it feel even more like you're stepping into uh, Kevin Flynn's arcade in Tron, you know. So. I have some really cool ideas with lights and, and track lights and all these other kind of cool stuff and the flooring and glow, all this kind of really interesting ideas. And I'm, and I'm super thankful for the community that has been uh, just pouring these ideas out. Um, some, some unknowing, you know, some asked for, and some just willingly giving it out, you know, cause everyone has opinion. So um, uh, with the arcade side, what we're going to do is uh, Will and I did a count um, that I need, I want to have um, right around 80 to 85 arcade cabinets in Flynn's once that will pretty much pack us to capacity. Where are you um, at right now? Right now I sit at, well, if I, if I include the machines that are not functioning, I have seven machines that are in the middle of restoration. So if I include those, I sit at right around 62 machines right now. That's, I mean, that's another 20 machines. Exactly. So that's like another 20 machines. Like for instance, today I picked up a machine um, in, a, in an interesting arrangement. Um, I picked up a Gemini wing from 1987 by um, Tech, Tecmo. Um, not a super well-known game, but still a, a classic to its own right. Um, I will keep it going as long as it can. But once the monitor dies and the board dies, I'll probably flip it to something else that I have the board for. I was thinking maybe Street Fighter 2 because the cabinet's very similar. Um, or Street Fighter 1 or maybe Mortal Kombat 1. I don't know. One of those or Virtual Fighter. I don't know. All these ideas are into my mind. But um, I've been in the process of collecting cabinets to the best of my ability. But like I said earlier, because our funds are so heavily weighted to the expansion, you know, I'm I'm making trades. I'm, I'm using um, other uh, resources, if you will, and, and bartering and trading for things in order for, to acquire um, what we, you know, what I, what I'm trying to acquire for for Flynn's. Um, we recently picked up, um, we recently picked up a Vulex cabinet, um, and I've been wanting one of those for a while. So now I'm also worried. It's not working because of the mere fact that I got to put uh, new um, um, fighting board adapters in it for the PlayStation four, because I wanted to run a PS four, like with guilty Gear strive or street fighter five or whatever. So we got that. Um, my, my goal is my goal is to, like I said, 85 machines. Um, I plan a trip in October and I haven't told anybody yet, but I am planning a trip in October to Texas um, uh, for another reason. Uh, but also when I'm there, I plan to make a run on um, there's a lot of auctions going on there. So I plan to shop locally, if you will, to the best of my ability and to um, go to some of the auctions and then pretty much drive back with a um, with a semi back to, to my to Florida um, in order to once again acquire more machines um, and I can find them a lot more affordable along the way as opposed to South Florida is pretty dry when it comes to machines. Um, we really didn't have any of those super, super large arcades and those that we did have they, they, they liquidated their inventory very quickly. So, and in different ways. So, you know, I'll find machines here and there scattered about. Um, but uh, in terms of what I'm looking for, uh, we're all about collaborative play. So I would love to get my hands on some more fighters. 
Um, I've been watching like once I, you know, once you and I met um, and I was able to learn more about the indie game scene, I've been definitely checking out various indie cabinets. Um, nothing in particular comes to mind, but um, I, I've been, you know, just kind of like perusing around. Um, I don't like to do a whole lot of window shopping when I don't have the money to buy it. So <laughs> I, I try to stay away from, you know, really digging in deep because I'm not at that point to make that you know transition. Um, but uh, I've, I've definitely looking at that. And then also Doc Mac over in in Galloping Ghosts. Uh, I've been watching them as well. And, and I've, I spoke to Doc you know, via email at the very beginning of Flynn's. And um, I really admire his drive to do like new game Mondays and stuff like that. I mean, that's hardcore uh, new game every week. That's a lot. He's um, got a lot of games. That, yeah, guy, I mean, that guy is the definition of a collector, <laughs> not to <laughs> mention making his own games. Yeah, so he's got he's got all sorts of things going on, but I, I like to I like to pick what could work for us. And I was talking to Will and a bunch of the Flynn's family member, and I said, you know, we may not be able to do one game a week, but we could definitely do one game a month because usually to build and restore a cabinet, I can do that in about a month, given the right time and just making sure everything comes in together. Um, and that's also another cool thing with the expansion side, because the expansion side will allow me the room to have my build space there because I want our community to see what I'm doing as I'm building and constructing it. And I'm doing that because I want them to, I, I want to be able to inspire as much as possible because um, you and I both know in the, in the arcade world, it can be intimidating. It gets very cloak and dagger um, and people get intimidated by it, but really it's not, it's not that complicated. I mean, it's a board a power supply some buttons, some micro switches, a joystick, a monitor, speakers. And that's pretty much it, you know. <laughs> like, right. I mean, if, if you can if you can dive into a computer nowadays, I mean, it's really just a really old computer. Like it's the same processing, the same kind of parts. They're just really big. You know, they right. just needed more space. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, bro, when I look at some of these cabinets, I'm like, goodness gracious! Like they could have fit all this crap into a much slimmer cabinet made it a lot lighter but these bastards over here i mean you make that freaking thing 700 pounds crush a person you know and i'm like why would they make this so big you know like, like i would have gone much slimmer yeah they um, could have gotten away with way less <laughs> material but you know but everything in the 80s and 90s and the 2000s was like bigger and bolder and all that kind of stuff i mean you see playstation 5 do it think about it playstation 5 i mean i'm not sure i'm not i'm not sure about the 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 mechanical components or the engineering that went into it, but it's a big system. And I asked myself, did it need to be that large physically and that heavy? You know, if the technology is getting slimmer and more compact faster, why is it so big? You know, and, um, you know, maybe they thought back there, grandiose. I mean, look at Killer Queen. That thing, you know, if that fell on you, you you're over. You might as well just end it because it's so huge. Um, but also it's a, what is it, an eight player game? Uh, Ten. So yeah, it's, it's five on each cabinet. So, yeah. So, I mean, that's a, a five, that's a large cabinet. Um, but, you know, that, that's my goal with the arcade machines. I would like to, I've been, I've been talking to some guys over in, in Japan and Australia and um, Europe about doing uh, an order with them specifically with like candy cabinets. Um, some of that, Jube, what is that? Jubex or Jubeats Ju or something Jubeats, like that? I think that's yeah, like Jubeats or Jubox or something like that. Yeah, yeah. one of those. That um, game is super fun. Yeah, I've been looking at those cabinets. Um, I've been kind of tracking and seeing what's all about with those. Um, I, I've been looking at some initial Ds that I would like to have. Um, because, because the arcade side is going to have so many cabinets, having sit-down racing cabinets might be a problem because of the mere fact that they take a lot of real estate up. And I'm more of the upright racing cabinet. Um, so, you know, working on that. The other development that I really want to implement, and I know I, I know that sometimes in the arcade community, it's, it seemed like blasphemy, but we do cater. We do have a lot of children that come, and we do have a lot of uh, members who are either physically disabled and, and they were in a wheelchair. And, you know, the games from the 80s and 90s were not conducive to ADA compliant, obviously. Um, you know, you, you can't really play that in the chair. Um, easily, especially because you have to get closer to it. And usually people with very uh, minimal mobility uh, from the waist down have a hard time. So I was thinking about acquiring some of those um, arcade play, uh, arcade one-ups and making like a kid zone in the back 
where the cabinets are lower profile and they're able to play them easier. And um, also it, it would benefit people in, even though I would name it something more kidly fr kid friendly, it'd be open for everybody, but um, also individuals in wheelchairs and, and that sort of thing would be able to roll up to it a lot easier because it's a lower profile machine. Um, and, you know, I've been keeping my eye on some of the, um, some of the, uh, what's it called? Uh, cocktail type, type machines. Uh, there's one, uh, cause we have catch the light at Flynn's and there's one called like monster crush or monster something. And it's very similar. It's a tabletop, a cocktail type machine. Uh, it's time and it's competitive. It's a really cool machine. Um, and I've been looking at some of those. Um, there, uh, I would say the absolute biggest one that I want to get for the community is I want to begin to upgrade our rhythm games, um, specifically the dancing games. So I've been talking to the guys over at Step Mania X and um, finding out what their window is from order for ordering. And because right now they're all sold out, like they're freaking backlog um, uh, ordering and all that sort of things. Because I'd love to have a Step Mania X once again because uh, our community deserves it, and number also because nobody has that um or very few people have it and being a, a huge fan of dance dance revolution and the whole series there and step mania and pump it up and and in the groove i really want to uh to integrate that into it but in terms of cabinets there's really nothing specific that i'm looking for other than i would say the step mania x cabinet and the jubeats one um and really whatever comes our way comes our way uh what i think i'm gonna do is as i begin to uh, have the opportunity to construct cabinets there and restore there, um, I'll probably put it up to vote, you know, like I'll pick five separate boards that I can get and five different separate things that I can get and say, all right, guys, this month, this is the vote. What do you want me to make? And let the community vote on it. Because in the end, it doesn't, that's one thing that I've always kind of been really, it, it's been very odd for me to observe is that in the arcade and the gaming community, gaming businesses, you know, the owners are usually very high enthusiasts and they're, they're, they're picking stuff that they want. Yeah. But, they're the shot callers in that situation usually. Yeah. But the thing is that doesn't matter. It, 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 it I don't, what I want doesn't matter. It, it matters what the community wants. Right. You know, that's what matters. And, um, and we're holding true to that mantra. Um, and we're an open book, um, when it comes to that stuff. So I think opening up to a vote would be kind of dope um and saying hey what do you want me to make this month and then go like you know you know uh go go all the way with it i would love to make i'm a huge fan of scott pilgrim they just released the new one for the playstation the re-release or mm -hmm. the you know whatever i'd yeah. love to make a scott pilgrim cabinet that runs off a of ps4 i would love that because i like the i like the world or have you ever have you ever run into expenda bros well it sounds familiar but i don't i don't think i have so Expenda Bros, you should you should look up that game. I have it on one of my MAME systems, and it was it's an indie game. You can tell basically they ripped off the Expendables, and um, like blatantly, and it's just a crazy like guns and explosions and animals blowing up, and it's all eight bit, and it's like and they mirror like like the Tony Crew or the Terry Crews character. You know how he's got that like huge Gatling gun in, yeah. the, in the show. In the game, he's got this huge gap, <laughs> you know, and it's just like, what? It's just so fun um, to do. So I, I really see me moving into building maybe some custom cabinets in that way. And then once again, indie cabinet too, man. <clears throat> I've been following once again. I, I don't know anything particularly off the top of my head because I see so many. But I mean, even the ones you pointed me towards, I, I admire the cabinets. I, I see... Uh, I see the potential with it. I see the attraction and allure with it. And also I want to represent and be able to showcase the indie cabinets uh, for people to enjoy and to have a great time with. Um, but once again, that'll probably come later down the road when we are a little more liquid and have more cash at our disposal. Cause you know, like we talked about you're starting indie cabinets with the cheapest ones probably going to hit you at like 2,500 bucks. Yeah, 25, 27. Yeah, I mean, I, I like your idea of like the vote. I think that'd be really cool, like a little bit down the road where you're like, okay, these are the five options. Which ones do you guys want us to bring in? You know? Yeah. Um, and Which one do you they, want me to they get to pick the indie. <laughs> I will. Well, hey, what did you say? Which What was that? Which indie they get to pick? Exactly. Yeah. 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 
let them pick the indie. I mean, once we save up, once we save up enough money and I have that money set aside, say, okay, let's vote. Which indie game are we getting? Right. You know, and kind of go that way with it. Um, you know, something that I've learned heavily uh, uh, since we spoke and, and I'm learning it more and more each day is that more games are not, is not going to equate more business regardless of whether or not now if you're yeah if you're now if your business runs off of the tokenization i get it each each game produces a certain percentage of your total revenue which means more games more tokens more tokens more money i get that but in my model where it's a free to play model where you're paying ten dollars an hour fifteen dollars uh, all day come and go as you please um it's quality over quantity exactly you know it's i'm i'm, I'm looking at it like mm, you know, a lot of people, oh, you should get this game. And I'm like, oh, you would attract so many people. I'm like, I don't, I don't believe that to be entirely true because people in today's world or, or the, the, the patrons that I'm, I'm, I'm recognizing and I'm beginning to see it. Everybody just wants a place to belong, a place to come and unwind and to step in. And, you know, they know your name, kind of like that cheers show, you know, they know your name, they know your drink, they yep. know about your life. They, they're honestly, and, and eagerly attentive and that's really what we're focusing on um some huge developments that we've been doing in the community even that i mean yesterday we were at coconut creek high school which is a local high school for their ninth grade orientation um we're talking to them about doing a monthly fundraiser at flynn's um we host summer camps uh we've hosted a ton of summer camps this summer boy scouts and girl scouts and royal rangers and youth groups and soccer groups and baseball groups because you know, I, we want to create uh, an environment that everybody can enjoy it, you know? And that's why we do also like today's Tuesday at Flynn's it's $10 Tuesday. Why? Because Grand Prix Racer Rama, the, my childhood arcade from high school did $10 Tuesdays, unlimited pay, unlimited play. And I told myself if I ever start an arcade, I would do $10 Tuesdays come hell or high water because, you know, I remember my parents, you know, not being, not being very wealthy, you know, to get to squeeze a 10 or a 20 out of them was difficult, you know, so I had to scrimp and save or maybe sell a video game at school or whatever in order to get my $10 for that Tuesday and then be able to go over to Grand Prix Racerama and play DDR or play The Grid or play Silent Scope or play Star Wars Pod Racer or play Galaga or Street Fighter or whatever it was or our Bloody Roar or whatever. Um, and, and that's why we kept it that way. Uh, you know, all the snacks at Flynn's, I, I try to keep my price point under $5. Uh, the alcohol, obviously we do serve beer and wine. That price point is, is a little higher, but even on that front, I keep things very affordable. You can grab a beer for four bucks, five bucks. Um, we do have craft beers that are a little more expensive because they're craft and microbreweries, microbreweries. But the whole preface is that if you keep it affordable and you keep it fun, and most of all, you keep it, you keep it community centric. And you constantly remind yourself, it's not about you. It's about what you can do for the community and what joy, happiness, love, and that you can bring. That's what matters. Because in the end, those loyal fans are, are, are what's going to keep a business going. You look at a lot of businesses that fail, it's because their community is not there. They don't have the patrons. You know, they don't have, they don't have anything. Exactly. Yeah. In a store because they think it's popular and they think it will work. It could potentially, but if you invest in people, even though sometimes it hurts, sometimes it's just downright nasty and people are rude, that's going to happen. But if you invest in people, that's an investment that returns its investment a million times over, you know? Um, and I've seen that time and time again, when I walk into Flynn's, I see people and Flynn's family members that if Flynn's didn't exist, I don't know where they would go. You know, I, I don't know. They'd be at home. <laughs> you know, like they wouldn't, they wouldn't be, so, where would they go? <laughs> you know, like I'm sure they may find someplace, but they choose to call Flynn's home because our, my focus is the community first and foremost. And yes, it takes money to run a business. But once again, if you focus on the community and you focus on the, on the patrons, you focus on the people that are supporting you first and foremost, everything else will click. Now, if you, if you don't, then it could be a death word downward spiral, you know? 
yeah, you may be growing for a little while, but you know, it, it's not going to last. If that community no. is there, the community is going to keep coming, keep bringing people. It's going to keep growing. Um, and you're going to keep getting cool stuff in there. And th that kind of leads me to my next question, which yeah. I've seen a bunch of pictures. You guys have a bunch of stuff in Flynn's. So it's probably hard for you to pick, but what are your five coolest collectibles that you have in the arcade in your eyes? Uh, our five coolest collectibles. Okay. So the first one that I'm going to point to is I'm going to point to um, an arcade machine. I would say I have a lot of interesting arcade machines, but my favorite arcade machine that we have is a very difficult one to find. It's Power Stone. So we have a Power Stone arcade cabinet. Um, it's a multi-tier, three, three, 3D world, multi-directional fighting game. Um, Dreamcast also released it. And that's probably on the arcade front, my, 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 my dearest, it's the machine that I check on the most, you know, like I'm like, Oh, did the monitor die? You know, like I'm trying to make sure that lives. Um, I would say in that in, in my favorite collectible for arcade machines, that that's the one definitely, um, in terms of the other items in our display cabinet, which everybody asks us, Oh, are those items for sale? And we're like, no, that's a private collection. Um, I would say in that case, uh, first thing that comes to mind is I have an original, I have a balls, um, a balls bottle, which is balls, the drink, B-A-W-L-S, blue with a bot with the dots all around it, glass, of course. Um, I got that when I used to do, when I used to go to LAN parties in high school, uh, what we would do is we would find abandoned buildings that still had power, uh, like commercial buildings. And we would uh, stake them out and we would, we would go into the building <laughs> We've now this is completely. I don't encourage doing this today. This is 100% trespassing. But um, we would uh, we would go into the building. We usually all arrive right around you know eight nine o'clock with our huge PC towers, our big CRT monitors, and a buttload of cat cable. And we would run uh, in each of the little offices like huge LAN parties. And that's where we would exchange data and we would play CS and we would play Dare to Feed or StarCraft. And and there was like, it, it got pretty crazy. I mean, we would have hundreds of guys in here, predominantly men, some women, um, but we play for balls. We play for cases of ball soda. And so one of those balls bottles I still have, and that's probably one of my fondest memories in that display case there. Um, and then I would say the next one is, you know, honestly, it's what people have created for us. Um, one of our friends, family member, Rain, AKA Imaginary Cosplay, um, uh, Rain made us like this really cool bat. And uh, it's like a bat, I think it's ha I think it's had like gingerbread, gingerbread man on it. Um, and so Rain made that for us. Uh, I think I named the bat Wilford. Um, so that really, that really meant a lot. Um, another really cool piece of collectability in that case is I have a Casey Jones mask from Ninja Turtles. So I'm a huge Ninja Turtles fan. <clears throat> I would say Ninja Turtles, Spawn, Batman, Wolverine. And then um, I like Ghost Rider a lot, but then I'm also a huge Johnny the Homicidal Maniac fan as well. Um, uh, Vasquez and Invader Zim. Um, but the reason why I bring up Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is because just so happens we are at Tate's Comics here in Lauder Hill uh, with Arcade Games for their TM Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Day. And um, the uh, original artist of Casey Jones was there. And uh, and also he's an artist of a lot of the other uh, turtles as well. And he was there. And so I got him to sign it. And everybody sees it and they're like, oh, what is that? And I'm like, I explain the story. Oh, man, you know, do you want to sell it? And this, that. So I would say that's number four. Don't sell that. Do not yeah, sell no. that. That is such a cool thing to have. <laughs> that definitely like, caught my eye when I saw the the case. I was like, oh, he's got a Casey Jones. <laughs> and it's signed yeah. by the guy who created Casey Jones. Um, uh, and then I would say the the other the other most the most the coolest collectible I have to say is probably our blockbuster VHS set, our cassette tape of uh, the case. Somehow Will had a case from Blockbuster. I guess he never returned the movie or something. But he had a lot of people didn't return the movies. Um, so we have that case. Um, and, and honestly, those are probably the five, but we're always in the process of collecting. Um, I am sitting in my office. I'm not in my office very often because I'm always out just doing other things. Um, and I have a lot of things, items in here that I plan to bring to Flynn's when 
the other side is open. Um, like for instance, my dad called me up the other day and said, Hey Eddie, I have, um, my old, uh, candy computer, like TOS or TS 108 or whatever. Um, I have my old Tandy computer and floppy drive and all that kind of stuff. And he's like, Oh, do you want it? And I'm like, Oh yeah, heck yeah. I want it because the mere fact I wanted this place and it, fun and it still functions. You could still play Oregon trail on it. Uh, or where in the world's Carmen San Diego or any of those on there. Um, a hundred percent or numbers, cr number crunchers or number munchers. I don't know if you remember that, but, um, number munchers on there. And, um, it, it, it's that sense of nostalgia that I want to bring back. Um, and that's why like, once again, like with the other side, excuse me, being able to have a VHS collection that you can just pick up a VHS and plop on down and watch a movie, you know, or hang out, or I want to expose the generation and the people that haven't been exposed to this stuff um, because it's, it's so gone. And, and, you know, I, I even completely forgot. So another component with the, the expansion too, is we want, I want to get into to more signings and more guest appearances. And the reason why I want to is because of the mere fact that once again, bringing more to our community, I really want to go after the eighties and nineties uh, personalities and see where they sit and what they're going on. And, and, uh, and, and once again, provide an experience that people, uh, are going to enjoy. I, I was talking to Will, you know, I was talking to Senpai on uh, Sunday night when we were closing down after our Guilty Gear Strive tournament. And I, and I, and an epiphany just kind of hit me where I, I just said it out of the blue. I said, you know, Senpai, we are all becoming guardians of the past, you know, you know, warriors of the forgotten, if you will, because we we are you know we're gatekeepers here you know if if we don't do our absolute best to bring this stuff to the forefront and preserve it um you know there's nothing like nursing a 35 year old arcade machine back to life <laughs> and being like what is i've replaced everything in here what is wrong you know like i can't figure it out there's nothing more rewarding than seeing the flicker of the screen turn on or hearing the sound i got the sound working in one of my mortal kombat cabinets yesterday i was like ah. Oh, Finally, I got that sucker working or changing the marquee out. Um, it's really cool. And, and as I was picking up the Gemini wing today, um, the, the individual that we acquired it from, he even brought up, and he was, uh, I think he was around 46. Yeah, I believe that's what he said. Um, he even brought up, he's like, yeah, you know, when I ran into you guys, I didn't even know these things existed anymore. And I'm, I'm like, yeah, we're very much alive. You know, <laughs> like we're, we're around. Um Keeping but it's it really going cool. every way you can. What was that? Keeping it going every way you can. Yeah, every way, every way, come hell or high water, man. I mean, uh, <clears throat> it's it's a blessing, um, nonetheless. And and I've, we've held true, we we've held true to the mantra of it's about the community first and foremost. We're going to be the beacon of light, hope, happiness, and joy as much as possible. And the other one I hold true onto every time is that if just one one Flynn's family member, one patron shows up a day one or to an event one it's a huge success that day i write it off as a huge success why because there are businesses and podcasts and streamers who get zero for days on end weeks months years days and we got and that one person took the time and went out of their way to come and visit us either at a convention or at the arcade itself or watch our stream or whatever the case may be and, uh, and that in itself is a blessing, you know? Yeah, I agree. I mean, it, it just takes one and then you start snowballing. It's two, it's three, it's four, it's 10. And it, it just keeps going. Yeah. Um, I mean, we've talked about all the things that I wanted to talk about and there was a lot. And I, I really, I really appreciate you coming on here. I was glad to see the expansions moving and the families growing and everything. Um, I guess the last thing here is just plug your social media so that people can check you guys out and keep up to date with what you're doing. Awesome. So we just, um, we're on the path to partner for Twitch. So if you'd like to subscribe to our Twitch channel or our, um, or uh, become a follower on Twitch, you can find us at Flynn's Gaming FL. So that's F-L-Y-N-N-S Gaming FL. And that's pretty much across the board for all our platforms, Flynn Gaming FL, predominantly for all of them. Um, so we got Twitch rocking and rolling with our streams, weekly streams. We got our uh, TikTok rock and roll, and I'm new to TikTok, working on that, understanding how that works and how that interacts, really enjoying that that learning curve. Um, Twitter, uh, we have at Flynn's Gaming FL. Uh, YouTube, 
Uh, you could just Google Flynn's Arcade and More. I believe you can also put like Flynn's Gaming FL, but I'm not sure that works. But Flynn's Arcade and More. Um, we got the YouTube. We got Instagram. We're just about to hit 51, 5,100 followers. So my goal is within the next uh, year, year and a half to hit 10K. So we're all right on path for that. Super stoked for that. Um, on Facebook, Flynn's Gaming FL as well. And then, um, of course, our website, flynnsgaming.com. And uh, we're located in Margate, Florida. Uh, if you're in South Florida, we're about 20 minutes west of Fort Lauderdale off of Margate Boulevard and 441 at 5869 Margate Boulevard, Margate, Florida, 33063. And we'll be at a lot of conventions this uh, next couple months. Uh, Saturday, we'll have something up and running over at Sunrise Comic-Con um, in Sunrise, Florida. Um, in September, we'll be at MizuCon the first weekend of September in Miami. Um, we'll also be at Sinister Nights, which is more of a horror convention in Miami as well. Um, hopefully, we'll be at Anime EY in November in uh, Cypress Creek and Fort Lauderdale-ish area, Pompano Beach area. And and then, you know, who knows where the rest of the world's going to take us. We have our upcoming cosplay event on September 18th. That's always a great time. We do a Gundam build contest. We do a cosplay contest. We do boba tea and a food truck. It's just an amazing time. For that as well and then we're starting something new called flynn's night out once a month on a monday um probably be the last monday of the month and um, we're starting this thing called flynn's night out where we are going to go out and support another local business so this month we're going to do bowling um so i got to go and talk to them and solidify that and uh and of course we have all the other events but i'm not going to bore you with repeating it over again uh you can look on our social media on our google my business page um, uh, at Flynn's Arcade and more on Google. Uh, if you haven't left a five-star review, that'd be greatly appreciated. Uh, where my goal is 300 by the end of the year. And I think we're at to like 246 right now or something like that. Um, so we got that going on, man. But other than that, that's what we got going on. Everyone wants me to start a podcast, but I don't have time for that just yet. So, <laughs> I mean, you've been on here twice. So, I mean, you only need about an hour a week to do it. It's not that much work. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I, I want to, I just want to say thanks for coming on. Um, I do really appreciate you coming on here and chatting about the arcade and letting us know what's going on, keeping the, the nerd culture alive and keeping, I mean, VHS, like that's, that's a thing still, which I, I remember those. That was like right when I was young. So it's yeah. cool that you still have those around. Um, but for anybody that's checking us out, I uh, appreciate you viewing it. Uh, don't forget to like, share and subscribe, follow us on our social medias and until next time, peace. Later guys.